This video was brought to you by Dashlane. Take charge of your digital identity and never forget a password again. Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, we'll be talking about the new Vega 20 Power 2018 MacBook Pro and comparing it to the base, middle, and previously top spec MacBooks that came out just a few months ago. Be sure to stick around because I'll be answering the biggest question that Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve editors have. Is it really worth paying the extra $350 for the new graphics card over the 560X? And if you already have a 2018 MacBook Pro, should you sell it and upgrade? We'll be testing a variety of codecs and other factors. I do wanna say that I won't be talking about benchmarks and thermal performance in this video like I typically do. That's because I took a more in-depth look in a separate video, which you can check out by clicking the card above or by using the link at the end of the video. I do have links in the video description below to all of the laptops that were tested, including the one that I personally ordered for myself, which is my recommendation to most of you that edit video. I'm also planning to make a few more comparisons with this new Vega 20, maybe to the 5K iMac, the iMac Pro, and a couple other machines. Make sure you guys are subscribed and have those notifications enabled if you guys wanna see that. And if you have a suggestion to what I should compare it to, let me know in the comment section below. Starting off stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip, we don't really see any performance improvements in Premiere Pro since the graphics card and CPU is barely used, unlike Resolve, which maxes out the GPU and gets the task done in 18 seconds, 55% faster than the previous top of the line MacBook Pro. Now let's move on to a five minute H.264 project with two LUTs and film grain applied. Rendering and exporting was about 18% faster in Premiere Pro and 30% faster in Resolve. As far as timeline smoothness, the previous 560X was able to play back this graded 4K footage without dropping frames in Resolve, but couldn't do so in Premiere Pro, so we would have to drop it to half resolution. But with the Vega 20, full resolution is now possible, just like the top spec Dell XPS. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to see a full comparison on that. These results were using software encoding, and I'll talk about the mixed bag of Premiere hardware encoding in just a bit. But before that, here's some pro tips for all of you Premiere editors. Set your editing preferences to metal, but use OpenCL when exporting. This has changed over the years depending on the hardware and the software that you're using, but with these new MacBooks in version 13 of Premiere, it's split with faster rendering using OpenCL and smoother timeline performance using metal. Now, if you have an older MacBook, I would suggest doing some tests for yourself, and if you use Resolve, just keep it on auto. Now let's move on to 8-bit H.265 where unfortunately I don't have old numbers for the other MacBooks with Resolve because I couldn't use this codec, but with the newest updates and the hardware encoding and decoding, the performance is fantastic. Based on my other Resolve tests, I would guesstimate about 30% better performance than the 560X. In Premiere, we see 40% faster performance using software encoding, which is fantastic. I'm glad that we can finally use QuickSync with Premiere, which has been around for a few years with Resolve and at least five years in Final Cut, but it is very frustrating how limited our hardware encoding options are. Supported resolutions are limited, so you can't use true 4K like from the C200 or other custom resolutions like 4.5K for RED, and along with that, the bitrate and even frame rate options are limited. Final Cut and Resolve, which are both one-time purchases, don't have these large limitations. And if you're using hardware encoding, it's hit or miss. With our H.264 timeline, it was actually slower, but with HEVC, it was a lot faster. I took the C200's True 4K60 and cropped it to fit UHD, and then dropped the FPS down to 30 to take advantage of hardware encoding, and the export was nearly twice as fast, so the results seemed worth it. But then exporting the same limited project using software resulted in practically the same time. I would suggest testing to find what works best for your projects and hopefully Adobe can add more hardware encoding options in the future. Before we move on to the difficult codecs like 10-bit HEVC and RAW video, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, something everybody should be using, and that's Dashlane. I'm a second year paying customer and I actually like Dashlane so much that I reached out to them about sponsoring the channel. If you're like me, you probably reuse the same password for the sake of convenience, but what happens when it's compromised and you have over 200 accounts at stake, including banking? Let's just say that I was sweating bullets. Dashlane made it much faster to secure my accounts and now stores all passwords, personal info, payments, and much more. It can even automatically change passwords and even search your email to find accounts that you forgot about, which was a lifesaver. Their apps and plugins are fantastic and will automatically sign you in, generate passwords, fill payments and personal information, and it can even search the dark web for your private data, which is great after the recent Facebook data breach. Don't make the same mistake that I did and make your online life much more secure, quicker and easier with a free Dashlane account by using the link in the video description. And when you decide to upgrade, you'll get 10% off by using the coupon code MAXY. 
Now let's jump into the new 10-bit HEVC footage from the X-T3, which wasn't available when these MacBooks came out. I wanna talk about this for a bit because I spent a ton of time investigating it because this new HDR video is really in its infancy and a lot of people are struggling. These new 2018 MacBooks have very good hardware HEVC chips, but unfortunately Premiere Pro isn't using them for 10-bit HEVC video. You can't even play back 4K24 at a quarter resolution. The CPU is maxed out and forget about 4K60. That plays back at 2 to 3 frames per second, meaning you'll absolutely have to transcode. Resolve, on the other hand, handles 24 and 30 FPS 10-bit HEVC video quite well, using only about 11% of the CPU at full res versus 99% at, with Premiere Pro at half res. With that said, the 4K60 footage plays back very poorly, even though it's using hardware decoding. This really seems like a bug that may need to be fixed because all of our performance looks like it's in line and it should be handling this much better. Both Premiere and Resolve can use hardware encoding for 8-bit HEVC, but since Premiere can't decode the footage properly, it takes two hours for a five-minute project. Unfortunately, none of these support hardware 10-bit encoding for HDR video, meaning it takes forever. Premiere is surprisingly the fastest for 4K24P exports, but keep in mind that it can't really edit this footage in the first place. I spent a ridiculous amount of time researching and testing this out and trying to find a good solution, but it seems like until we get hardware 10-bit encoding, we'll either have to deal with large render times or huge upload sizes using ProRes or DNxHR. As far as editing 10-bit HEVC, all of the 2018s have the necessary hardware. In Final Cut, even the base model will do a good job because of its efficiency. DaVinci Resolve does do a good job up to 30 FPS, but I would highly recommend the Vega 20 model since the GPU usage is almost maxed out, meaning the performance with the lower end graphics will suffer. In Premiere Pro, the editing experience is horrible either way, so I can't really say if Vega 20 helps at all. Moving on to Canon Cinema Raw Lite, which, as I always say, isn't light at all on your system, the Vega 20 model was 20% faster, which is crazy since the other three models performed basically the same. I'm not sure why, but my only guess is that the newer Vega 20 architecture is more efficient with this codec, since we can now play back the footage at half resolution, which the 560 model couldn't do. Now this is a huge deal if you edit footage from the C200 because now you can edit graded raw footage on this laptop. If you couldn't do that before, had to transcode, that is a huge improvement. So I would say if you're editing C200 footage, wow, absolutely, you need the Vega 20. Now Resolve also had a massive improvement, about 60% percent faster and instead of playing back at 27 frames per second meaning you couldn't handle 4k 30 it now plays back at 34 frames per second at full resolution unfortunately 4k 60 is still very glitchy like with the 10-bit hevc which leads me to believe that it might just be a bug with 60p footage and resolve since final cut actually plays us back at 32 frames per second but the playback of 60p is much smoother now on to our last video editing test, 4.5K Red Raw. We see about 55% faster results in both Resolve and Premiere Pro. That is a significant improvement. How are we getting this much of a gain? Well, not only is the graphics card more powerful, but it also puts out less heat. Because of this, at the end of our render, instead of the CPU running at about 2.4 gigahertz, because the cooling system can't handle all of the heat of the processor and the graphics being maxed out, it ran at 2.9 gigahertz. That's 500 megahertz faster, and of course the GPU is faster as well. In DaVinci Resolve, this graded footage will play back at 24p in a UHD timeline with half res red decoding, and in the full 4.5k resolution it could almost do it, but requires a quarter res decoding. Premiere handles it a bit better actually, and it could play back mostly at half res, but you could drop it to a quarter just to be safe, and the footage looks pretty good. So now, let's answer the biggest question. Is it worth paying extra for the Vega 20 GPU? And for those who already bought a spec'd out 2018 MacBook, should you take a big hit and upgrade? First off, if you're not pushing your machine to the limits and you're happy with the performance, then of course not. It definitely sucks if you just bought a top of the line machine, but if it works well for you, just stick with it. I'll also add in that I don't think the Vega 16 is worth buying for the asking price when the best version is only $100 more. Now for those of you that push your machines hard like I do, there is very impressive performance improvements to be gained with the Vega 20. We saw between 30 to 60% improvements in Resolve and between 18 to 55% faster speeds in Premiere. Not only that, but our smoothness experience when editing in the timeline had really big improvements as well. So it's really obvious that both Premiere Pro and Resolve really like this new graphics card. If you're buying a new MacBook Pro and are wondering if the extra cost of the Vega 20 is worth it, I would say yes. If you're serious about 4K video editing, absolutely. 
You're basically spending between 5 to 13% more money, depending on the other components that you choose, for 18 to 60% video editing performance. And if by chance you game on your MacBook, we saw up to 85% better performance compared to the previous 560X, which you can check out by using the link in the description, where I also have links to the MacBooks that we tested, including the exact MacBook Pro that I just ordered for myself. So let me know your thoughts on the Vega 20 MacBook Pro in the comments section below. And if you're gonna be buying a MacBook, I would appreciate you using the links in the video description, which helps me be able to spend money and a lot of time to make videos like this one, which by the way, was about four days to make this video. I'll also be comparing the Vega 20 MacBook Pro against some other machines, so make sure you enable notifications so you don't miss out. Don't forget to check out our sponsor Dashlane and use the link in the description to sign up, even if it's for a free account. I highly recommend them. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.